this light with my new glasses is making my nose sweat. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I am bringing you my June wrap up. But before this video starts, I just want to let y'all know that I have an announcement to make. So for a while, I have been wanting to make a romance inspired book club just because there's so many book clubs out there on booktube or the book internet and I haven't really seen one where they only read romance books and so I took to book twitter and asked if anybody wanted to do this book club with me and I got a lot of responses way more than I thought I would so my other lovely hosts are um Jen from Jen's bookshelf, Ashley from Ash Heart Books, and Stacy from Stacy's Bookish Props. Us four will be reading a romance book each month. We will be having a live show at the end or slash beginning of the next month. This month we are reading Meet Cute by Helena Hunting. We are reading this by August 3rd. Our live show will be on August 3rd. So if you want to participate with us and read this book along with us, be sure to tune into our live show on August 3rd. We have not sorted out the details as to whose channel it will be on and the exact time because some of us do live in different time zones and different countries. Be sure to stay updated on my Twitter. If you don't know my Twitter, it's Avery Loves Books without the E in loves. Also, there's a link to it down in the description box below. Be sure to check out all of these lovely ladies that are my hosts. I will leave all their channels linked down below and they'll probably have all their links to their social medias too. You can go follow them on Twitter too. They'll probably have some updates on there. I forgot to mention what our book club name was also. We are called For the Love of Books Club. If you want to join in in the romance fun, be sure to read, oh that's upside down, <laughs> this book with us. But anyway, <laughs> done with the announcement, there you go. So we're going to go into this portion of the video that you actually came here for, <laughs> my June wrap up. Okay, so for my stats for this month, I read 17 books, 4 were physical reads, 8 were ebooks, and five were audiobooks. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to be going from my least favorite to my favorite reads that I read in the month of June. I also wanna mention I read a lot of these books during reading vlogs that I have on my channel. I will link all of them down below and talk about which book you will find which vlog in. But since I talked about these books a lot in those reading vlogs, I will not be talking about them in depth in this video. So if you want to know my live reaction thoughts to some of these books, I'll let you know which books I have mentioned before. Number one, we're going to go with my least favorite book of the month. We have Forever My Girl by Heidi McLaughlin. I read this for the Smutathon. I listened to it through Libby and I gave this book two stars. Long story short, this is a second chance romance. Basically about a rock star who I believe 10 years ago he abandoned his girlfriend to go be a rock star and he comes back 10 years later and apparently she has a son that's 10 years old but she's in a relationship she's engaged to be married this book i go more in depth in my smartathon reading vlog so check it out down below for my specific gripes about this book because there are many but one that just ticked me is that cheating is a big part of this book and it does not get addressed at all really pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, I don't like cheating in books at all. I don't ever think it's valid. So that was just one of many reasons though why I did not like this book. The only reason why I did not give it a one star is because I did really love Noah's character. Noah was the son of the love interests. I think he was the only plus in this whole book for me. So yeah. <laughs> Next we have On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. I read this book for the Romance-a-thon. This was the um, group book that we read for that read-a-thon. I also read this as an ebook and gave it a three out of five stars. I was expecting to enjoy this book way more than I did. This is basically a romance where a tutor and the tutor's student, they're on a plane to go meet the student's parents in a foreign country because this tutor is going to tutor this student while they're on vacation basically because he had cancer for a long time and he missed a couple years of school and he's in high school by the way. Their plane that they're on crashed lands and they're the only two survivors and it's them living on this deserted island together for many many years. I just found this so 
boring. It's supposed to be a survival story and let me just tell you, I am a big Survivor fan. I've watched Survivor basically my whole life. Those are real people trying to survive on basically deserted islands. This book just isn't correct in some of the things that would happen on a deserted island with two people for like, what, five years? Four or five years? Anyway, I digress. The main problem that I had was that we were told a lot of things instead of shown them. It was just basically dialogue between these two characters when we didn't get their feelings at all in there, which I want their feelings. I wanna know how they feel. I wanna know everything. We just got dialogue with them when I wanna know their inner thoughts and we didn't get that at all in this. I just didn't connect to these people at all. Okay, in the next five books, I'm going to fly through because Y'all already probably know what series this is a part of. We have the Ice Planet Barbarian books. I am up to date on the Ice Home and Ice Planet Barbarian series. So if you didn't know, long story short, alien romance books, humans finding lifelong mates with blue aliens on an ice planet. There you go. From the Ice Pin Barbarian series, I read Barbarian's Valentine by Ruby Dixon. This is number 16.6 .6 in the series. I read this as an ebook and I gave it a three stars. The next book, we have Barbarian's Seduction by Ruby Dixon. This is number 17 in the series. I read it as an ebook and I gave this book a four out of five stars. The sixth book that I read this month was Ice Planet Honeymoon, Vectal, and Georgie by Ruby Dixon. This is number 1.5 in the series. I read it as an ebook and I gave it a three three stars and I read this during the romance-a-thon. Next we have the spin-off series Ice Home. The seventh book that I read in June is Hannah's Hero by Ruby Dixon. This is number six in the Ice Home series. I read this as an ebook and I give this a 3.5 out of five stars. And the last book a part of this whole grouping we have Debbie's Distraction by Ruby Dixon. This is number seven in the series. I read this as an ebook as well and I gave this a four out of five stars and I also read this book during the romance-a-thon. The next book that I'm going to talk about today is Frigid by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I read this as an ebook. I also read it during the Smutathon, and I gave this book a three out of five stars. This is a new adult romance. It takes place when our two main characters are in college. This fulfilled the trope for friends to lovers. Our two main characters, Cindy and Kyler, have been best friends since like basically forever, and Sydney has always like really liked Kyler, has always had a secret crush on him, but he's basically a man whore. He sleeps with so many girls. He's just a big player and she just feels like I could never be with him because he's been with so many girls and I'd have way too much competition because I don't compete with those girls that he's with. That's her feelings. Kyler on the other hand has been in love with Sydney for forever as well but he thinks that she's too good for him so he sleeps and is with all these girls because he knows he can't have her so he tries to fill the void with being with other girls if that makes sense this book was an okay romance book jennifer l armentrout like either is like a huge hit or a huge miss for me with her books this was a miss unfortunately it just wasn't memorable in the slightest i don't remember anything except that they go on like a ski trip and they get locked and trapped in a blizzard in their cabin by themselves for a couple days but then there's also a side plot of somebody trying to kill them yeah i didn't really enjoy this one unfortunately the next book that i'm going to talk about today is broken prince by aaron watt i gave this book a 3.5 to 3.75 stars i'm not really gonna settle on a rating it's just in between that range for me this is number two in the royals series of course it was a physical read i got the physical book right here and i read this during the smutathon now these books are very unique to me because Normally when I read problematic books, I don't like them and I ditch them. I don't continue on with the series. That is not the case for these books. I know they are very problematic, but I am addicted nonetheless. As I said in my Smutathon reading vlog, I consider this series to be like a soap opera, but in high school. If you didn't know, it's about our main character named Ella and she is basically adopted into this family full of rich people. We have a single dad whose wife died a long time ago, and he has five sons who all hate her. It's about Ella and her maybe having a forbidden relationship with one of the five sons in this family. 
and the repercussions of all of that. So this was the second book in the series. The first one left off on quite a big cliffhanger. So did the second one. You can see in my reading vlog, I was not really happy about the fact that it left off on another cliffhanger and I have still not read the third book. I did enjoy this other than it being problematic. I really don't care. The next book that I read was called Suddenly You by Lisa Kleepus. I listened to this through Libby. I read it for the Buzzwordathon because it has you in the title. I gave this book four stars. This is a historical romance book where our main character woman is turning 30 and she is still a virgin and she doesn't want to be a virgin anymore so she hires a male escort to help her not be a virgin when she's 30 anymore <laughs> and turns out that the guy who comes up to her door on her birthday who she assumes is her male escort isn't actually her male escort and it goes from there. I was really loving this book at the beginning but at the end there was just some problematic elements that came up and some things that I was not okay with and so I had to drop it from a five to a four unfortunately um, but I did enjoy it nonetheless and I thought the audiobook was fantastic so I still recommend it I just I did not really like the end at all. Number 11 on my list is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. I read this as an ebook. I read this during the Smutathon. I believe this completed the challenge for read a book that's written by an author of color and I think a new to you author. And I gave this book also four stars. This is about our two main characters, Ruth and Evan. Ruth is basically a town pariah. Everyone hates on her because of something that happened in her past with this town. Our other main character, Evan, moves in next door to Ruth, ends up actually falling for her, even though the people in this town are telling him not to. And I did enjoy this book. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would, mainly because we have autism rep in this book, which I had no idea. Ruth has autism and I loved her as a character so much. I loved her bluntness. I just loved her so much. <laughs> the next book on this list is The Protector by Jodi Ellen Malpass. I listened to this through Libby and I read a lot of it during the Romance-a-thon. I did not finish it during the Romance-a-thon, but I listened to a lot of it in then, but my audiobook expired while the readathon was going along, if that makes sense. <laughs> I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is about our two main characters, Cammy and I think Jake is the other main character's name. Cammy is the daughter of this really big businessman and he has gotten a note from like a hit person telling him that his daughter is in trouble or like they're gonna try and kill their da his daughter. So he hires a um, bodyguard for her named Jake and it's a romance between the bodyguard and Cammy. I ended up enjoying this way more than I thought I would, mainly because of the audiobook narrators. I actually really enjoyed them. They made this book so much more enjoyable for me. I also loved like the dislike to love trope in this. They really did not like each other, mainly because they were so attracted to one another. That's why they did not like each other, but they finally, of course, gave in to the attraction. And it's actually very, very, very steamy. One of the like best written steamy scenes I've read in a while, just gotta say. The 13th book on this list is Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray. Sorry, my hand is covering this up. It's covering the barcode for my library. I don't really want people to know where I go to the library. <laughs> I listened to this through Libby, even though I have the physical library book. I ended up also requesting the audiobook that I forgot about, and I got it at the same time as I got the physical book. And I read this for the Buzzwordathon because it has you in the title. This is basically romance between Livy and Nicholas. It's a second chance romance. Basically, Livy and Nicholas used to be together in high school, but Livy moved away due to some circumstances you read about in the book. For the past, I believe, 10 years, they've always hooked up only on her birthday once a year until one birthday, Livy doesn't come to the hookup spot that they agreed on. Then the following month or so, she ends up moving back home anyway where Nicholas lives. It's the repercussions of that. It's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet-esque story because the families hate each other. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and really, really recommend it. Number 14 on my list is Royally Yours by Emma Chase. I finally finished the Royally series. This is the fourth and final book in that series. I listened to this through Audible because you can only get it on Audible. And this is a story about Queen Leonora and King Edward. If you didn't know the Royally series, I read them a couple months ago. I have the first three up on my shelves on that shelf somewhere. Basically throughout that whole book, the queen is like a grandma. She's like an old spinster and her husband has died and she's basically ruling this country all by herself. And so this book goes back in time to the 50s, I believe the 50s. And um, it tells the story of how the queen 
and husband got together. I really loved, loved this book. I think it's gonna be my second favorite in this series. It was so good and I gave it a five out of five stars. <laughs> Next we have a children's book. We have Too Good To Be True, The English Roses by Madonna. I actually read this to y'all. Y'all won't see that video for a little while though. I have a lot of editing to do for that video because it's just me reading a book. It's like, what, 40 minutes long, which is too long. Basically, if you didn't know, I love the Inkatrosis. I grew up reading the original book. I recently found out earlier this year that Madonna wrote many English Roses books and I had no idea. So I went to my library and they only have this one in the library and it was so cute. It was so cute. Five out of five stars for sure. Basically, if you didn't know, it's about these five English girls, what it means to be in fifth grade and how you go through friendship struggles in fifth grade and boys in fifth grade. It's so cute and I can't wait for y'all to watch the video that I posted about me reading this book. I love this book so much and I wish I had my own copy. Okay, we're coming up to our final two books. First, I'm going to talk about the Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This was a physical read for me. I read this during the Smutathon. I believe it was my favorite book that I read for that readathon. And I, of course, gave this a five out of five stars. This is about our two main characters, Olive and Ethan, and they are the maid of honor and best man at this wedding. Their siblings are getting married. And everyone at the wedding party besides Olive and Ethan end up getting food poisoning and Olive's sister has told them to go on this honeymoon for the bride and groom since they can't go on it because she won it in a contest and she doesn't want it to go to waste. So they are up for a free honeymoon. But the only problem is that Olive and Ethan actually hate each other. <laughs> but to be able to go on this honeymoon, they have to pretend to be together. It is so funny. It is full of romance, hilarity. It's so good. I didn't think I would enjoy this as much as I did just because I heard it has fade to black romance steamy scenes, but I actually really enjoyed that because I don't feel like you need to have that in every romance book. I'm okay if some books don't have that. Perfectly fine with that, but I'm also good if they do. You know, I also want to say family plays a huge role in this and I loved that Olive's family is wonderful. <laughs> but other than that, I totally, totally recommend this book. If you haven't read any Christina Lauren books yet, I totally recommend this one as a starter for sure. Or if you're not into romance yet, this would be a great starter book for you to get into romance. The final book that I'm going to talk about today is maybe my new favorite book of the year. We have Oh, Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. Ooh, this book was an emotional roller coaster for me. This was a physical read. This was read for the Buzzwordathon. It has your, you in the title. If you know from my Buzzwordathon reading vlog, I actually had a really, really, really hard time reading this because this book deals with one of my, if not my greatest fear. Our two main characters here, Quinn and Graham. And this book takes place in between two different time periods. Each chapter will switch off from the past and present day. The past basically goes through how the relationship starts and how it comes to fruition and how it blossoms. Um, it basically starts because uh, Quinn and Graham's partners, their romantic partners, are actually with each other cheating on Graham and Quinn. So Graham and Quinn are essentially being cheated on and they meet because they have caught their lovers in the act of cheating with each other. They obviously don't get together right then and there. It takes many months until they actually meet again. Present day, it is seven years after they got together and they're having some marriage issues. They're married now and they're going through a lot of marriage issues and they barely speak to each other. They don't get along at all anymore. They have a really, really rocky relationship that's basically coming apart at the seams and you figure out why this is happening and it is heart breaking. I cried many times reading this book. If you know by my reading vlog, I actually was a gonna DNF this book because it put me through so much anxiety. Because I talked about a subject I am totally scared of. I was dealing with some other stuff in the month of June. This book became my saving grace for that rough period in the month of June for me. And I loved it so much. It is one of the, if not the, favorite book of the year so far for me and I cannot recommend this book enough. <laughs> Sorry for the long video. I keep making really long videos. I just keep reading a lot of books. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you would like to because I would love to talk to you about them. 
in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye. Thank you.